Hey, welcome to Half the Battle! Last week, we had a very positive review of a G.I. Joe comic. It was nice to look at an awesome issue. But to even things out, I have to get my snark on now. There has to be equilibrium on this show. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. So today, I'm gonna show you what I think are the worst comic book covers from the original series and special missions. Though, on a positive note, I have to admit I really struggled to come up with even five, since overall the covers were usually pretty damn great. These five were not. Number five, issue number eight, codename Sea Strike. I reviewed this comic in my first year of doing this. The cover confused me then, and it confuses me now. It looks like an aircraft attacking the Joes between collapsing pillars. What it actually is, though, is a pod on two very long legs. I had no idea what was going on on this cover, and I doubt anybody that saw it for the first time would either. Oh, and there are two things I didn't notice during my original review. One thing is just a small nitpick. Scarlet is trying to manually fire the VAM's gun, something it wasn't designed for. And one major WTF detail on the cover is that it looks like freaking Snake Eyes is firing, piloting the thing, and attacking the Joes. And no, at no point does Snake Eyes commandeer one of these things in the issue. So yeah, this whole ball of confusion is why the cover made it on the list. Number 4, Issue 77, Aftershocks. The whole point of a comic book cover is so that you would buy it if you saw it on the store shelves. And to try and sell this issue, they went with... Yeah, a catfight between Lady J and Zorana. Talk about appealing to the lowest common denominator. Also, I have no idea what Zorana is trying to do to Jay's nose. And due to the way Lady J's shoulder patch is drawn right next to Zorana's mouth, at a quick glance it uh, kinda looks like she's casually smoking a cigarette while brawling. So this cover made the list because it's a cheap attention grab and kinda sexist. And speaking of sexist... Number 3, issue 143, Dark Island. I give you boobs the cover. Yeah, they're front and center, no way to not notice those bouncing beauties. And in the issue itself, Scarlet does wear that outfit and she does get stuck in quicksand, but there's nothing gratuitous about her depictions there. Those are just two reasons this cover made the list. The third reason isn't unique to this issue, but it is one that plagued quite a few of them at the time. It's the frickin' title change from G.I. Joe to G.I. Joe starring Snake Eyes, with the G.I. Joe logo being very small and the Snake Eyes name being huge. This has always irritated me. Number 2. Issue 53, Pitfall. Well, the reprint, really. I reviewed this issue earlier this year, but I'll go over the reason this cover exists again briefly. The comic was released during Marvel's 25th anniversary celebration, so the borders had Marvel characters, with one iconic character from the book chosen for the close-up. For G.I. Joe, this was Snake Eyes. Because it's always bloody Snake Eyes! Even though he didn't even appear in this freaking comic issue! But you know what? That's fine! It was an historical celebration, and it made sense in context. However, that context was ripped from the trade paperback reissue published years later by IDW. Since they couldn't use Marvel characters, they just left the borders blank, making it the stupidest looking cover ever. If you can't reproduce the original cover, just make a new one! They did this for some of the covers for the trades anyway, so they could have replaced this confusing anachronistic mess. And yeah, I realize I'm cheating a bit here, since this isn't an original cover, but um, it kind of sort of is. And the number one worst comic book cover is... Special Missions 25, Forced Play. It's a pterodactyl attacking a G.I. Joe Jeep. Yeah, I think I'm done here. I'm gonna go home. Oh, wait. I'm already home. Damn it. This is the most lying, deceitful cover they've ever made. While at the same time, it 
doesn't technically completely lie, which is somehow worse. Ask yourselves, when a kid, or hell, even an adult, sees this cover, what would they think? Well, they might just leap to the conclusion that G.I. Joe was gonna fight dinosaurs in this issue. Though it wouldn't be much of a leap, it would be more like taking a small step towards the conclusion. Especially since we have seen dinosaurs in G.I. Joe. So of course, that's totally not what the issue is about. In fact, the actual story is so far removed from fun dino adventure, it's on a completely different continent. It has a terrorist that wants to bomb a school full of children. It also has suicide bombers. And it also has the World Trade Center, but that's just WTF in retrospect. It's like a kid thinks he's getting Jurassic Park, but ends up watching Reservoir Dogs. If it had a dinosaur on the cover for some goddamn reason. But I did say the cover doesn't completely lie. Oh, there is a pterodactyl in this issue. It's a model in a museum that terrorists shoot, so it almost, almost lands on the Joes. And that was their justification for this cover. There's flimsy reasons, there's paper-thin reasons, and then there's this. So yeah, them putting a dinosaur on the cover when the goddamn story has nothing to do with dinosaurs is why this is the worst cover from the original comics. And that was my list. But what do you think? Do you feel any other covers deserve to be on here? Then let me know in the comments below. Well, I won't see you next time, everybody, because then it'll be October, and you know what that means! <laughs> Monster Month is coming! I'll see you then, mere mortals! <laughs> what? Oh! Right. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Ugh, just feels wrong me saying that, you know? <laughs>